scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. To you be all the glory, to you be all the honor. For the many great things you will be doing in our midst tonight, we give you praise even in advance. The God that doeth wonders. Now ask him to give you an encounter tonight. Lift your voice in expectation. Lord, visit me. This is a miracle service. I receive my portion by faith in the name of Jesus Christ as you move around blessing bless me as you move around healing heal me as you move around delivering deliver me as you move around planting fresh fire do not pass me by is someone praying tonight Jesus, much less name we pray. Welcome to our miracle service for the month of March. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight, the Lord will surpass your expectations. Yeah. I say it again that my God will surpass your expectations. Yeah. Listen, for as long as your faith remains alive, there is no limit to what God can do. Hallelujah. He's not a man. Men can lie. Men are limited. Men are incapacitated. But the God that we serve is a mighty God. Let your faith be strong and alive even tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you welcome someone by your left and right? In the name of Jesus. And tell them prepare your heart. God is doing mighty things tonight. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Special greetings again to all our friends and family, those who have taken the time to fly in from across the globe. It's always an honor to receive and welcome you. The Lord bless you and he will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. And for the so many who are connecting by way of the internet, thank you for participating in this service and God himself will visit you right where you are in Jesus much less name we pray tonight um, we have a lot to do and God will grant us grace and while I just prayed and meditated on um, the things that I'll be sharing it was very strong in my heart to begin um, this session tonight with a call to salvation. For as long as I am alive, for as long as this ministry remains, our priority under God will be to see that souls come into the kingdom in order of priority 
greater than healing, greater than signs and wonders, greater than any and all manifestations, is that we have a harvest of souls. Let me tell you something about Jesus. Number one, he is God. Number two, the Bible declares that he came to the earth as a representation of the Father's love. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That means whosoever does not believe in him will perish. The Bible says so already, that he that does not believe is already condemned. Hallelujah. And so it says, but whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Take note, the world through him might be saved, not through opinions, through him. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven that is given unto man by which we must be saved. As we begin to draw the curtain expecting the return of Jesus, it is important that we become more intentional and emphatic as to the harvest, the salvation of souls. When we gather like this, it is impossible that in this crowd of people inside and outside, there would be no people who are in need of Jesus. He sends them by himself. The Bible only mandates that we pray he says the harvest is wide but the laborers are few and he says pray the lord of the harvest that he would send laborers and so it's important to begin tonight with a call there are several people who are yet to make definite decisions as far as submitting to the lordship of jesus is concerned now listen very carefully what does it mean to be saved it doesn't mean to walk out here and cry recite a chant and go back it is very possible that you can do all that and yet you are not saved the matter of salvation is not about coming forward or remaining or reciting something you were told to recite are we together now according to scripture there are two major components that must be involved in genuine salvation number one that the message of salvation must be articulately communicated you cannot give your life to nothing. If you believe in Jesus as a friend, you are not wrong, but you are not saved by that declaration, that belief. If you believe in Jesus as a prophet, an apostle, you believe in Jesus as God, that does not save you. There is an exact information about Jesus you must believe that translates to salvation. Are we together? Paul preached that message intelligently on the day of Pentecost. He said, let it be known to you that this same Jesus that you have crucified has today been exalted as Lord and Christ. It matters what you believe about Jesus. When it has to do, listen carefully, when it has to do with salvation, you must believe. Listen carefully. You must believe and admit your current state that you are unable to help yourself and that by the righteousness of the law and the righteousness that comes through yourself and through your works, you are unable to be saved. Salvation only comes through faith that is in Christ. Are we together? The Bible does tell us that our righteousness, the best of us is as filthy rags. There's no point for argument. And then the Bible also declares that the wages of sin is death. As simple as that. That the soul that sins will die. And by that verdict, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Are we together? So Jesus now comes as a mediator. He comes as an expression of the Father's love. That since you are unable to meet the righteous standards of God, I have come in covenant to receive of your nature of sin and to pay the due price the due penalty for sin and isaiah the prophet was speaking and said he shall see the travail of his soul jesus did not come to die for himself no jesus did not come to die for a few people for in paul's message on the day of pentecost he said men and brethren what shall we do and and peter replied 
he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise he says for the promise is unto you and unto your children even as many as are far off they that the lord himself will call so when it has to do with salvation it is for everyone but you must believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus that jesus came became sin became a man and he died in exchange to purchase redemption for you are we together that when you believe in jesus christ with your heart according to romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 and 10 that if you believe with your heart the lord jesus christ and you confess with your mouth his lordship you shall be saved and the law is in verse 10 it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation verse 13 says neither um is there he said whosoever calls upon the name of the lord he shall be saved there is no salvation in any other now the beautiful thing about salvation is that god still respects your will your ability to choose that means as an act of your will and your volition consciously you can listen to this message and say jesus i choose as an act of my will to reject you meaning i reject your life meaning i reject your holy spirit meaning i reject the potential for dominion meaning i reject eternal security and redemption meaning i reject everything that is god Rejecting Jesus is a public declaration of your eternal fraternity with Satan. The moment you reject Jesus consciously, Satan no longer becomes an illegal person in your life. To reject Jesus is automatically to embrace Satan. To embrace all the causes, the woes, and all the things that plague our world today. Submitting your heart and your life to Jesus is more than becoming a Christian. It's more than the religiosity of coming into a faith practice that acknowledges Jesus as Lord. It is a relationship. He says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. This is the only faith practice I know of that thrives on relationship, not just rituals. Although he is God, you can know him. This is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And we are mandated by God to go and preach, he says, to preach the gospel to all creation. What is the gospel? The good news. A holistic capture of all that Jesus has done as proof of the Father's love. Now, you can reject Jesus whilst you are listening to me, whether online or on site. I will painfully respect your will, however, to your detriment. But Jesus is giving someone a chance right now. You probably were invited for the first time. You are somewhere scattered within, outside. Or for someone, you've heard these teachings and these messages again and again, but you are yet to make up your mind. The Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, you can hear his voice and assume he's not speaking to me. Apostle, I came to be healed. Talk about healing. Apostle, I came because I'm tired of poverty. I came to access the grace for favor. Indeed, you will find it because this is the house of God. But can I tell you, if you come to my house and eat my food, sleep on my bed, use my restroom and ignore me and walk away, you cannot call me friend. He desires a relationship. You can come and receive of the fringe benefits of redemption. But more than the things that he will give you, he's presenting to you tonight the gift of himself. The greatest gift that can be given. Himself with his life coming alongside his wisdom, his power. And you may say, Apostle, you don't know who is sitting and listening to you. You don't know the story of my life. I've done everything evil to be done. Jesus extends his love even for people like you for while he walked upon the earth he said those that are without sickness do not need a physician now that you have acknowledged that you need his help he can come to you as the savior even the physician it's the savior he can move your mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save 
forever the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave your savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave hallelujah I'm about to make an altar call no looking left no looking right Jesus is speaking to you no waiting for someone to be the first let me watch who comes out so that i save myself public embarrassment no an invitation to jesus is like an invitation by one who is greater than the president of the nation as a matter of fact to come we, we rejoice over many things when you are given um, a visa or a passport or citizenship of another nation people rejoice they roll on the ground when you are given a job you rejoice over your employment letter what Jesus offers you is life even abundant life are we together I'm going to make a call one to five calling on two groups of people number one those who have heard me and are determined while you were listening to me the Holy Spirit whether you know him or not you know that he's the one nudging you I brought you to Koinonia tonight. Maybe your first time, you may have been here before, and you are saying, I need Jesus. I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of playing church games. I am ready to make it right with Jesus. And then there may be a group of people you are saying, Apostle, I remember making this call, maybe on a crusade ground, maybe listening to a tape. But right now, my life has gone haywire. I need restoration. I'm calling these two groups of people very boldly inside, outside. Please make sure that you come to Jesus with determination. And let me say this, please, if you are outside, um, once the front is full, you will do well to just move to the LED screens and then just participate there while we pray. For those who are following online, the Lord Jesus is calling you wherever you are. Please leave your seat and come. I begin my counting now. One. Savior, he can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever the author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. conquered my pain he rose and conquered my shame Jesus conquered my shame come come to Jesus come come to Jesus young and old educated and uneducated rich poor and everything in between come salvation is for all men neither is there salvation in any other name there is no other name given unto men under heaven by which we must be saved now listen to me i really salute all of you who have made this bold taken this bold step to come the next thing i would ask you to do is to mean every confession and every word are we together now yes Some of you are crying. There's nothing to be ashamed and afraid of. For our God 
is champion forevermore. as high as it can get this is unto Jesus the son the king the savior Lord and even Christ say this after me as loud as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I declare that I believe in you I declare that you are my savior I declare that you are my Lord I declare that you are my king. I believe with my heart that you died for my sin. And I confess with my mouth that you rose from the grave even for me. Right now, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken. Say it again, is broken. I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I am a bona fide recipient of eternal life amen keep your hands lifted father the Bible declares that as many who will come to you that you will in no wise cast away you have brought this many to you the Bible says I believe in the gospel it calls it the power of God unto salvation and in the name of Jesus I declare over you according to the integrity of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god the power of sin satan hell and the grave it is destroyed from this moment in the name of jesus christ and here is my prophecy for you from tonight the sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength, and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh rides up the wounds of this world, He heals all the Thank you very much for making this bold declaration. Now, there are counselors. If you're here in front, there are counselors just by my right, which will be your left from where you are. I want you to please in concert and very politely just follow them. They will have a word with you very quickly and then you will join us as we continue in the course of the service. Let's give them a big God bless you as they go. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for salvation? What a harvest tonight. Unto Jesus be all the glory. Keep clapping until they leave. Keep clapping until they leave. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me. Till the Christ be formed, no eye has seen, say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Word. 
Christ is formed in me. Very powerful song. I submit to you until my healing is perfected. I submit to you until your wisdom is perfected in my life. I submit to you until that which I desire that makes for life and godliness becomes my experience. May that be someone's testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go to a brief discussion and then we trust God for a mighty move of the Spirit tonight. You will know that you encountered the God of the Bible tonight. In the name of Jesus. Listen, listen. Pay close attention. For God has something to say. You know that song? It's a prophetic word for people who easily get distracted. Hold on, I'm not singing. It's a prophetic word. Because there are people, the Bible says the sower is God himself and the seed is the word. There are many people when the word of God is about to come, the spirit of distraction, punching their phones up and down, maybe even chatting, doing a lot of things that distract them. And then the rima word for you comes and your spirit is not prepared to receive. So listen, listen, pay close attention. For God has something to say. God's love for us is unconditional. According to Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. It says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with my loving kindness have I drawn thee. God's love for us is unconditional. According to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, Romans 5 verse 8 tells us that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He did not wait for us to sign a form that if he died, we would not waste his sacrifice. He took the risk as a representation of his love. So when it has to do with the love of God for us, there is no question as to the fact that God loves us. Whether you are aware or not, it is truth according to scripture that God's love for me, God's love for you is unconditional. Now pay attention. But the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional. God's love for me, God's love for you is unconditional. It remains eternally so. But the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional. Please listen very carefully. That God loves me, God loves you in whatever state you find yourself. It does not take away the love of God for you. But just because you are loved by God does not mean you will live a victorious life. Listen carefully again. That God's love for us is unconditional. But the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional. Two scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Please pay attention. It, it says 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently you see a condition there hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth this is his promise to you but there are conditions if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that he commands scripture number two Isaiah 1 19 and 20 popular scripture Isaiah 1 verse 19 and 20 let's read together in concert ready one to read if ye be willing uh-huh ye shall eat the good of the land so whether whether the good of the land gets to you or not the bible tells you there is good in every land but that if you are willing and obedient then you shall eat the good of the land verse 20 
it says but if ye refuse and rebel ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it so one last time God's love for us is unconditional but the manifestation of his promises in our lives is highly conditional this is the first thing I want you to get tonight so the main issue I wrote here the main issue tonight is not the question of whether God loves us or not settle that once and for all whether you think he loves you or not do you know why I'm saying this because this is usually the first thing people say when they find themselves plagued with all kinds of tragedies does God really love me watching my family go through this maybe a financial situation maybe a health crisis I'm telling you now based on the authority and the integrity of scripture that God's love for all men in fact the Bible does not say God has love it does not even say God shows love alone it says God is love it's not something he does it is who he is so the main issue I repeat here tonight is not the question of whether God loves us or not it is a question of why his promises and did you know, by the way, the Bible t says that the promises of God are yea and amen. I think that should be 1 Corinthians 1, 20. Please give it to us. Let's try that scripture. That should be 1 Corinthians 1, 20. Did I get that right? Look for it for me. The promises of God are yea and amen. The promises of God are yea and amen. Even though the Bible declares that his promises are yea and amen. Thank you. Okay. Second Corinthians. For the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. So the Bible here tells us that the promises of God are yea and amen. Do you know what that means? There is a guarantee that if and when the conditions that release those promises are engaged, God is committed by his integrity. He's bound himself with an oath and a promise that by these two immutable things the Bible declares, it is impossible for God to lie. The question is why... We have not seen the visible expression of these promises in our lives. And remember, we dealt with it here some weeks ago, according to 2 Peter 1 and verse 4. Wherefore have we been given great, exceeding great and precious promises, the Bible says, that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So the Bible tells us that we have been given in Christ and through Christ and by Christ, exceeding great and precious promises. Listen carefully. The promises of God I wrote here are activated in the life of the believer by engaging specific spiritual forces now this is i'm getting to the meat of my teaching now the promises of god are activated in the life of the believer by engaging specific spiritual forces someone shout it say spiritual forces one more time say spiritual forces hallelujah yes there are spiritual forces that work in synergy, work in honor to God's word to see to it that the promises of God are made manifest here and now in the life of the believer. And this is where I want you to listen very carefully. When you come into Christ, you receive of the life of God like our precious people did minutes ago. And then the Holy Spirit now on legal basis comes to live in you and in partnership with the word of God he begins to teach you not just the ways of the kingdom but he begins to show you the various spiritual forces I call them systems of advantage that have been provided for in Christ and by Christ for your overall excelling as the believer it is the Holy Spirit's assignment, Jesus said, that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. Do you believe that? So the promises of God are activated in the life of the believer by engaging specific spiritual forces. There are a number of them. 
and I want to reveal a few of them. We may not discuss them in detail. This is a miracle service. But just to put you in that position of responsibility that if certain dimensions of the promises of God are not at work in your life, even though you are a believer, it means that you have not recognized or sustained the intelligence to engage and even release the spiritual forces that have been allocated for your victory. Are we together? I wrote down a few of them here and I want you to listen very carefully. Number one, the force of light. There are many spiritual forces that have been given to the believer that when you do business for want of word with these forces, the result is that your life becomes invincible, even a sign and a wonder. The first force that is given to the believer to help your overall excelling is the force of light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for your light is come. That means remain on the ground and remain defeated and inactive because of the bankruptcy of your light. You arise and shine only when your light comes. John chapter 1 and verse 5, the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Say the force of light. Number two, for sake of time, is the force of prayer. The second spiritual force that is given to the believer to help us manifest the promises of God. Listen carefully. The force of prayer. Mark 11, 23 and 24. Mark 11, 23 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible leaves that believer with an assurance that he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 it says therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if you pray when ye pray believe that ye receive them and thou shall have them the force of prayer number three the force of fasting there are many of them i just put a few of them together to be able to show you that if your life is bankrupt of the manifestation of the promises of god it will be that you have not engaged one or more or even all of these promises the force of fasting Jesus himself fasted and prayed. The disciples who would later become apostles fasted and prayed. Fasting happened in the New Testament. It happened in the Old Testament. Are we together? There is power that is released while we fast. Number four, the force of faith. The force of faith. First John chapter 5 and verse 4, it says... This is the victory, whatsoever is born of God. First John 5, 4, it says, Overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Even our faith. The force of faith. It says, when he was teaching about the whole armor of God, remember? In Ephesians chapter 6, I believe, Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he was teaching them to put the whole armor of God and he calls faith a shield wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. The force of faith. Every time Jesus was helping the disciples to reveal to them why they did not have some things happen in their life he would usually trace it to the issue of unbelief why couldn't we do this in fact when peter came when the devil came to manipulate peter jesus rebukes the spirit and says get thee behind me satan and he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat he said but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted, he says, strengthen your brethren. The force of faith. Are we still together? Number five, very quickly, the force of praise. 
the force of praise. Psalm 67 from verse 5 and 6. These are spiritual forces, mysteriously powerful, that help the saints to transport the promises of God from the prophetic dimension into the experiential dimension. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee, verse 6. It says, then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. Praise. That mysterious weapon. There are people who have held on to praise alone. And with it they have, they have commanded tremendous levels of victory. Is someone learning? A quick recap. Spiritual forces that help believers to walk in dominion. Manifesting the promises that have been given to the saints. The force of light. The force of prayer. The force of fasting. The force of faith. The force of faith. Number six, the force of favor. The force of favor. Very powerful, mysterious spiritual force that can help men to maximize life and maximize destiny. I was preaching for a dear precious pastor friend yesterday and we had an opportunity to discuss a bit on favor and it dawned on me again. I have taught this for all my life and yet I never get tired of teaching on favor because my life is a product of the favor of God. The force of favor, where God compels men and compels systems to respond favorably, favorably, showing you unusual kindness, giving you unusual access, and commanding towards you unusual acceptance. These are the tripartite indices that measure the presence of favor. One more time, let me repeat it. The presence of unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance when these tripartite manifestations happen in your life you are favored indeed walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favored i am walking in abundance Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. The force of favor. Listen, do you know? Not the six that have listed alone. There are people who have zero over six working in their life. How for God's sake, using spiritual intelligence that you have now, how do you expect to walk and live in dominion, not understanding the force of light, the all-surpassing supremacy of light over darkness, the force of prayer, the force of fasting, the force of faith, the force of praise. Imagine with me, with what you know now, a man's spiritual life without these forces working. Number seven, the force of sacrifice. These are the spiritual forces that control the arrival and the manifestation of the promises of God that the Bible says are yea and amen. The force of sacrifice. Psalm 50 and verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Sacrifice is a powerful and a deep mystery. A mystery that is practiced by both believers and even people who are unbelievers. Sacrifice is powerful. The Bible is, is full of stories, instances where men and women engage this mysterious force and they rewrote narratives over their lives. It was even this force that was engaged when God wanted to redeem man. He had to give his only begotten son. The force of sacrifice. Can I give you two more? Eight, the force of patience. Hmm. Patience is a deep, mysterious and powerful spiritual force. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience 
patience is so important it is one of the fruit of the spirit there are many people who have been cheated out of life because of impatience patience is powerful hallelujah I've given you eight let me give you one more the force of the prophetic the force of the prophetic the force of the prophetic this is so powerful the force of the prophetic Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 Hosea 12 and verse 13 and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved it was the Lord that brought them but he used the prophetic now imagine describe for me using your imagination ladies and gentlemen a believer who has fully activated the force of light plus the force of prayer plus the force of fasting plus the force of faith plus the force of praise can i continue plus the force of favor plus the force of sacrifice plus the force of patience plus the force of the prophetic i will describe for you what that kind of believer will look like joshua 21 from verse 41 43 to 45 that is the kind of testimony that such a believer would have in this case all the cities of the levites 43 please 43 43 and the lord gave unto israel all the land which he swore to give their fathers and they possessed it the lord gave them but it did not mean they possessed it take note the lord gave them the land that he swore to their fathers but whether they possessed it or not was their own responsibility it was possible that they would die without possessing it and God will still say, I have given it to you. The Bible says they possessed it and dwelt therein. 44. And the Lord gave unto them rest round about. Prophesy to your life. Rest round about. One more time. Rest round about. That inevitably will be the testimony of one who understands how to engage these forces. There are still a few more, but let me tell you, these are the major forces that control triumph and dominion in this kingdom. The force of light. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me. You see, for some of you, you have one over nine. Well done for finding the one, but it's not enough as far as the testimony you desire. Even in mathematics, one over nine is F. Is that true? There is need for an upgrade. Apostle, all I do is to fast, congratulations. But that is not the only force. Apostle, all I do is to pray, congratulations. There are other forces. These forces are not this. You are not supposed to pan pick anyone that you feel is convenient the forces have been allocated for your holistic victory the challenge with believers is they pick the one that they are mentored to appreciate while ignoring others if you are part of a prayer and a prophetic ministry chances are excellent that you will pick the force of fasting alongside the force of favor add the prophetic to it and ignore the force of light ignore the force of praise even ignore the force of patience and sacrifice if god has granted you grace and you are being mentored by a strong teaching ministry chances are excellent that you will embrace the force of light and others like the force of praise and even the force of faith and then ignore others this is already a sound message for someone tonight. 
In the kingdom, you are not given the liberty to pick which forces you feel you like. All of them have exact roles that they play as far as helping you manifest the promises of God is concerned. The force of light, the force of prayer, warding of the arsenals of darkness, the force of fasting, building up your spirit and your capacity to be discerning and to be receptive, the force of faith, helping you to be able to connect to the power of God. That is the biblical assignment of faith to help you. Faith is like a host, I would always say, that connects you from the point where the concern is to where the power of God resides. If you want to water a garden and there is a tap that is running, even though that tap has an endless supply of water, it may not be able to reach your garden. Is that true? And so you go and look for a host and connect it. Sometimes it will be a very long host connecting it from the tap to where that garden is. And the moment you open up the tap, you find out that it's watering your plant. That's the assignment of faith. Faith connects you to the power of God. Faith connects the problem to the power of God. So if you do not build your faith, it will be like a small host. You want to stretch it that far to reach your garden. But because you have not elongated and enlarged that host, in the Bible, there are all kinds of, and all dimensions of faith. There is no faith or zero faith. There is little faith as taught in scripture. There is great faith. There is exceeding great faith. It's up to you to choose where you want your faith to be. The force of praise. The force of favor. The force of sacrifice. Praise is very powerful for instance. As powerful as John the Baptist was coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah, a lady danced his head out of his body. She danced to the point that the king made a request and said for dancing and making me excited, say anything you want, I will give you to the half of my kingdom. Now, I took out time to do a little research to write the various needs of men. I wrote a few and I want you to listen. I have found out based on scripture, observation, and even based on the work that I do, that these are usually the major needs of people. These are the things that they desire even tonight. Walk with me as I run through this list. Number one, speed. There is a desperate need for speed. Most people are desirous. They desire to gain time because they may have lost time in ignorance as a result of all kinds of delays. Number two, fruitfulness. Number three, restoration. I'm listing for you the many problems and I'm sure while I'm saying it, some of you are already smiling. Thank God, because that you just mentioned my own restoration. Healing for many people. Bodily healing. Deliverance from all kinds of spirits and influences. I'm listing the various problems that draw people to come for a service like this. Number five, exemption. Apostle, they are about to downsize people in my company and I do not have any advantage based on maybe tribal affiliation or based on experience and so on and so forth. But I hear that there is a mystery in the kingdom called the mystery of exemption where men can be exempted. It happened while the ten plagues were being unleashed upon Egypt that on one hand there was darkness but in Goshen there was light. Exemption is not a new phenomenon. All through scripture, you find out that God's people were exempted from plagues, from disaster, from all kinds of things. Breakthrough. Many people desire to break out of certain limits. The Bible says you shall enlarge and spread out from the north to the south and so on and so forth. Remembrance. You will be amazed how many people have come here today and their single prayer point 
is apostle i'm surrounded by many people who can be used by god to help me but it looks like there is a spirit that sits upon their memory and makes them to not remember me direction i'm confused where do i go to to the left or right should i travel abroad or should i remain in nigeria should i leave abuja or remain here should i keep working in my office or do I find my way somewhere? Do I keep doing my professional work or start business? Direction is very important as far as destiny actualization is concerned. Are you learning? Number next, whatever number it is, strength. Strength. Many have come here exhausted emotionally, exhausted physically, and the Bible says strength is small. Hallelujah. It was Isaiah, I believe, chapter, what would that be, 40? Speaking about the renewal of strength. It says, has thou not heard, has thou not known? The everlasting God, the Lord, is that true that there is no, he does not get weary. There is no searching of his understanding. And then it says, even the young men will be weary. The youth, it says, he does not faint, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he giveth power to the faint. Somebody say power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. Do you know why people faint? People faint because of the consistent battles. Provided you are alive and you live in a world like ours today, there are many things that sap your energy emotionally. You may be a parent and just when you are trying to manage the issue of no salary, no payment, your children just come with a PTA letter to let you know that the school fees has been increased by 50%. And chances are excellent that you can become emotionally fatigued. It's true. The Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. It says, but a broken spirit can dry up the bones. I receive text messages, emails from people complaining, and you hear them say, I am tired. I am tired is a psychological way of saying I'm about to give up. What do you think leads men to suicide? You know, it used to be something that people laugh at. Africans laugh at people and say, these white guys killing themselves. But you see that spirit patiently crept his way into Africa and right now someone just strolls around as if he's going to the market and the next thing they pick his dead body somewhere with a letter I am tired of life I forbid that over your life and I forbid that over your children there's a very particular psychological case that I've observed that is on the increase and on the rise right now they call it mental health mental what they call it mental mental disorder huh? not direct madness but mental health this especially among teenagers there is a spirit that has just trapped that demography and is destroying those people you will see a young boy misbehaving and you will think he's just being nasty and naughty until he does something to hurt himself or herself god is able to increase strength it used to be an embarrassment for men to cry those days. No matter what it is, they say, be a man. Be a man means let me not see tears from your eyes. But it's amazing how men cry like children now. They say, listen, you better join me to cry because sooner or later, we will all cry. The reality that is before us now. Hmm. The concept of be a man has become obsolete because the vicissitudes of life have beat down even the strongest of men to become like children. After all, Jesus wept. That is comforting for someone who has been crying. The balance is that he did not weep forever. The Bible already says, weep not. Weep not. The current speakings of God is that you weep not because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and he is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls. And for someone who came here weeping, God has given us a beautiful handkerchief to wipe those tears forever. But I submit to you that men and women alike can become overwhelmed by the situations of life, rent issue plus health issue plus causes plus the wickedness of men 
Are we together? Plus all kinds of prejudices that come with this life can equal breakdowns of any sort. And sometimes, even if you are Jesus, you may be overwhelmed and find yourself crying. Strength. How about revival? There are people who are saying, I'm, I'm not here for healing. My spiritual life has gone as low as it can get. Prayer, zero. Fasting, zero. Word study, zero. Commitment towards spiritual things, zero. Passion for the house of God, zero. Love for the brethren, zero. You are in desperate need for revival. What does it mean to revive? To revive means to bring back to a position of stature, stability, and vitality. Transformation. There are many believers who are in need, desperate need for transformation. Transformation it was, is what sponsors becoming Christ-like. There are many people who are saved and it's only because you saw them come to the front here, there's no other evidence in their lives that they've met Jesus. Every other thing looks like Satan. You are in need of transformation. The Bible says to not be conformed to this world, but to be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are we still together? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Prosperity. There are people who are here and they are not hiding it. There's nothing to hide. They are here simply because they are tired of financial problems. It's as simple as that. And do not feel embarrassed that you came here because of that. Where else would you come for help? Did the Bible not say that he will send you help from his sanctuary? The house of God is a place of help. Many people laugh at the church in sarcasm and say the church cannot help people even economically. After all, what do preachers know? When you have financial problems, you need some kind of economic, intelligent perspectives. It may not be true. Not every man of God is dull. God is helping all of us. But there are people who have opened up themselves to the whole counsel of God. Make no mistakes to think that the church cannot help people to be empowered economically with the dignity of kingdom integrity. The house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. Are we together? And like you would be learning, there is always a prophetic advantage to wealth that the world cannot give you. Yes. Wealth, I taught you last week, so do not forget the reward system of the kingdom. I have taught you series upon series on finances. We have one scheduled for this year, and I will continue to teach. But let me tell you sincerely, you want to be empowered financially, sustainably. Do not embrace value and intellectual approach to finances alone. The world is wicked. There are spirits. They don't care how economically sound you are. Samaria, I believe, had people who were economically sound, but famine still came. The world is going through the formation of another, another kind of financial tragedy that we hope does not bring people to their knees again. Every once in a while it happens. It's a circle. But the people that do know their God, the Bible says they shall be strong, capacity, and they shall do exploits. It says, Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Are we together? God can prosper men. God can prosper men. There is a kingdom's way of prosperity. This is not what I'm teaching. I'm just showing you the major needs of people. And I'd be lying, we both will be lying to not admit that it is one of the major issues that has brought people right now. Most people are already standing at the corridors of compromise simply because of financial limitations school fees, house rent, monies for expenditures, and all kinds of things. I think it is insensitive of a man of God to ignore these things in light of the current happenings in our world. 
I consider it quite insensitive. Any true leader, any true shepherd that loves his people must be able to make his contribution as far as empowering the people economically is concerned. And the key is light. Both spiritual, prophetic, and economic intelligence is what needs to weave themselves together to get you completely out of poverty but let me tell you getting out of poverty as an experience is a reality and your whole lifetime does not have to be invested to make that project happen if you follow God's way it is the way of wisdom many people arrogantly would not listen to the counsel of God and continue to double across paths that only repeat pain like many of you have refused to listen to God. I know what I need to do. I studied economics. I'm not insulting your pedigree. But we're talking of higher spiritual laws that produce results that can be proven here and now. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart from out of their mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The Bible then says they are life, not to everybody, to those who find them and health to their flesh. You're not empowered economically. You will live a sad life, an angry one for that matter. It will now extend to jealousy, anger and all the negative attributes that come with lack and let me tell you it is not the will of god to be and to live in poverty let me repeat it again for your hearing and to strengthen your conviction it is not the will of god regardless what the economic situation is right now you must first believe that there is a way out of this for me not by playing pranks and crooks and by demonic manipulation and some of these negative things with the dignity of kingdom integrity you can rise and can i tell you you can rise on time god gives men speed so that they can serve his purposes he told pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me when he tells that financial pharaoh to let you go is so that you can have the liberty to serve him Financial resources help you to serve God in truth and to serve him properly. You can become a blessing to people. If you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But you see, when God prospers you, you can become an extension of his love to all and sundry. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. The meaning of that is that every financial pharaoh that has trapped you, for as long as you have found yourself here tonight in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, financial shame and embarrassment must give way from your life. Yeah. Do you believe the teaching so far? The love of God, regardless your condition, is unconditional. But the manifestation of his promises in your life and my life, the manifestation of speed, fruitfulness, restoration, healing, deliverance, exemption, breakthrough, remembrance, direction, strength, revival, transformation, prosperity, and the list goes on. Every one of these needs and desires are controlled by the aforementioned forces. If you know how to engage them, then you will stand victorious. This is why we teach week in, week out, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, exposing you to be able to handle these forces with the mastery of a professional so that you will be able to command all kinds of victory. And may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. The era of living a defeated Christian life is over for you. So if you take the time to take responsibility and look inwards, you will find out that it is not the lack of the love of God in your life that is responsible for where you are. You are here for a miracle service and God is going to be visiting us shortly. But you see the word of God is coming to prepare your heart. 
Don't say, God, are you there? Do you love me? Rather, take responsibility and ask, which of these nine forces have I ignored? Which of these nine forces do I not understand? Do you know you can dedicate the remaining part of March to say, let me take, for instance, the force of praise and, and, and examine it and understand how it works. I will praise God every day for the remaining part of March. And you will be surprised. The realm of all round rest, the Bible calls it rest round about, is the heritage of every believer in Christ. And it is a possibility that a man can be blessed in all things. The Bible says in Genesis, I believe, 24 and verse 1, it says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Read with me, please, the remaining part. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? A man can be blessed in all things. Now, when the anointing of the Spirit, let me teach you this and then we begin to pray. Let me show you what happens in a service like this because many of us really do not appreciate the ministry of the anointing when the anointing of the Spirit of God hovers around the people even by the ministry of the Spirit you know what happens the anointing of the Spirit and I've taught you here when it is made manifest in the lives of the people the anointing expresses itself in two forms principally according to first Corinthians I believe 124 is that first corinthians 1 24 yes but unto them which are called both jews and greek is said christ from the word christos the anointing is the power of god and the wisdom of god someone say the power of god then say the wisdom of god one more time say the power of god and the wisdom of god the bible says christ can be made manifest as the power of God and Christ can be made manifest as the wisdom of God that means every time you see the anointing of the Spirit resting upon people the anointing is manifesting for others as the wisdom of God guiding you and helping you to know what to do for others the anointing is manifesting as the power of God what is the assignment of the power of God I've taught you many but principally especially for tonight the assignment of the power of God with respect to a miracle service like this is creation and correction to create and to correct to create and to correct so when the power of God when the anointing manifests as the power of God it is there to create and it is there to correct correct what a situation that was not so from the beginning like your health condition it is incredible that in a moment right now we're going to begin to pray and you will watch people who came here sick just like that and the power of God rests upon them and supernatural miracles begin to happen and all kinds of other supernatural occurrences happen but I remind you that as you receive the anointing you must position yourself to know that the anointing will express itself in two dimensions number one the wisdom of God that means for someone you may fall down and stand up and you may think that it's just a deliverance that happened to you it may not be so it may be an impartation of supernatural wisdom you stand up from that experience and your mind begins to function at a supernatural frequency you know what to do you know how to apply the laws of the kingdom to get results for you the anointing of the spirit has come as the wisdom of god for someone you are in a situation right now that does not require advice and counsel you need a head-on collision with the power of God as simple as that for instance if you are in a situation of witchcraft all kinds of yokes and curses spirits of delay all kinds of manifestations of darkness you are here with a medical report that is threatening your life there is no counsel right there maybe it can happen afterwards what you need is the anointing revealing itself as the power of God Are we together 
so that you don't keep expecting the anointing to manifest as the power of God alone whereas the financial situation that is plaguing you may require the manifestation of wisdom so that you know what to do so that you guide your financial decisions are right maybe you are living a life that is by far higher than your financial level no matter what the power of god does the bankruptcy of wisdom will still return you back to that situation so what you need is the anointing of the spirit energizing you by wisdom to know how to begin to walk now you engage the force of patience and you know that it is not lack of faith to remain in that one room until god begins to increase you the spirit that pushes you to live a fake life I must buy an SUV of 10 million 20 million whereas all you have home and abroad is 2 million you see that's not wisdom so what you need is as you fall down you better know what the Holy Ghost is doing when you stand up it should be that foolishness that remains on the ground you stand up lifted changed are we together yes that one day you are the one who will buy cars and give people but for now move with faith and patience listen 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 no distraction please listen are we together yes it is amazing how many problems believers have are largely self-inflicted I told you that sometimes when we blame demons they are very happy and even flattered taking credit for things that they are not exactly say, well I know I caused this one but I'm shocked that you are giving me the credit for this one I watch you make bad decisions using your will. To the Greek and to the Jews, Christ is revealed as the wisdom of God and revealed as the power of God. Revealed as the wisdom of God. And wisdom is expressed, I have taught you here, in the quality of superior decisions. You make decisions that are pro-destiny. You make decisions that are pro-advancement. The assignment of foolishness is to compel you to make decisions that tie you down and keep you at the same level perpetually. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, it translates, it is revealed in the quality and the excellency of the decisions that you make. Men like Dr. Mudok will say, decisions decide destiny. It is true. You can decide to remain this way, even though God has spoken by the spirit that is a year of open doors. The doors may remain closed for you because you are not willing to make the kind of decision by the Spirit. And you see, you cannot make a quality decision with insufficient information. This is where the Spirit of Wisdom comes. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine. The Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed by the teaching? So next time you go, as you leave this place tonight, and you find a believer who is saying, I don't know if Jesus loves me. You lovingly draw that person and say, my friend, my brother, or my sister, I want to tell you from the authority of scripture that regardless your situation, your situation is too small a basis to measure or describe the love of Jesus. The problem is not Jesus loving you or not loving you. It's been settled. I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God loves the richest and the poorest. God loves the wisest and the most foolish. God loves the most fervent Christian and the most um, one who has turned his back away from God. They are loved by God. As far as God is concerned, God is love. But the manifestation of the promises of God and the possibilities that my life and your life will command is not just dependent on his love. He loved us and gave up himself. He gave us his spirit. He gave us his word. It is up to us now to take responsibility in partnership with the Holy Spirit and begin to release these forces. 
I will recap one more time, then our prayer begins. The force of light, the force of prayer, the force of fasting, the force of faith, the force of praise, the force of favor, the force of sacrifice, the force of patience, the force of the prophetic. Aside from fasting, you can experience every one of those forces right now. A correct church program should give you an opportunity to release all of these forces from the opening prayer and the praise worship. So whilst you are enjoying praise and worship, you're not just enjoying musical prowess and excellence. They are priming you to participate and release these forces. Are we together? You have been patient, and that is a force too. So every other force can come and work in your life. No wonder you will not live disappointed because having engaged these forces and having positioned yourself by faith to now receive even the prophetic, how could your life remain the same? So that when you walk out of this place, it is not magic. You can, you can, there is, there is an intelligence to describing the manifestation of the promises of God in your life. When someone tells you, you came for koinonia and this is Monday already, look the kind of testimonies you have. You can say glory be to God, but you can tell them you too can have that same testimony. Let me show you the forces that were at work. Now you start like a lecturer with confidence. The force of prayer, you will tell them. The force of fasting, the force of light. And hope that they do not think you are playing games with them. Because if they ignore these forces, I submit to you by the authority of scripture. Anybody who ignores any of these forces, you have signed in to live a defeated life. Perpetually so. But now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. How does he cause us to triumph? By giving us access to light. Access to light. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 One more time. The Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. going to shout seven hallelujah and at the seven shout listen this is an instruction that just came to me by the spirit you see the way of the spiritual man the bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it is going nor where it is coming that is the pathway of one who is led by the Spirit. Many times God will give instructions that may not seem to make sense. But in the foolishness of the leadership of the Spirit is the breakthrough of the saints. Are we together now? The word hallelujah is broken in two. It's halal Yeshua. Praise the Lord. The Bible says praise ye the Lord. To praise him in the firmament of his power every time you halal Yeshua you will cause and compel according to scripture it says let God arise the king rises with a shout he says the shout of a king is in the midst of them so the word hallelujah is not just a Christian chant 
it is halal Yeshua. Do you know what me it means to praise? To praise means to extol, to flaunt the quality of a man. That means when you say you are great, you are brilliant, it's like reading out the credential of that man. And the moment you begin to do that, you compel him to reproduce that thing again. So in saying hallelujah, it's a prophetic chant that means anything good about God. Hallelujah suffices to say you are great. Hallelujah suffices to say you are the warrior. Hallelujah suffices to say you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Everything that makes him God is captured in that word. Halal Yeshua. We're going to shout it seven times. And very quickly, I want you to please bring those under the anointing. I truly believe like it was in Jericho. A city that was shot, nothing went in, nothing went out. At the seventh time, there was a shout and the Bible says the wall of Jericho, it went down and it sank. For someone, at the end of this shout, you will look and not find the things that, that have stood as mountains for you again. Are you ready now? I will call the number and you will shout hallelujah. One. Two, three, four, five, six, are you ready now? Seven. Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome tied everyone here by the power that raised Christ from the dead be loose now be loose now be loose now I lose every chain I lose every chain ancestral chains chains of darkness chains of limitation I command be loose right now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm declaring because that's what I saw in the spirit. Chains. I'm still saying it again. I don't know what has tied your hands. A symbol of your productivity. Your feet. A symbol of your motion. But in the name of Jesus. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. That chain be broken right now. That chain. Be broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Every time your hands are bound and your feet is bound, even though you have eyes, you have a mind to think, you will not be able to make progress. I'm about to pray again. The binding of your hand and your feet is a prophetic statement because there are some of you you've been unable to move forward some of you have been unable to be productive i pray right now i don't know who i'm speaking to but i speak as one sent of god every spirit that has tied you everything that has bound you release them now release them now release them now release them now, release them now. In the name of Jesus, I declare be released right now. Be released right now. Shales kabarando zavaleko skadebranda. 
and every family that has been bound you came here bound not understanding what is the mystery behind the hardship and the occurrences in your family in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare you are released this moment 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 the Lord is asking me to break covenants a covenant is a legal agreement that binds people and binds territories and binds families when it has to do with dominion over covenants that is the ministry of the blood the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel can I pray for you in the name of Jesus any family here and any individual who is under covenants of ancestry covenants that lead to poverty covenants that bind people at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus that fire will come upon you and that covenant must be broken are you ready one two three shout Jesus be free by the blood of Jesus help them please be free my God be free be free be free be free from every covenant every ordinance every covenant I say it again be free covenants are powerful they can tie men and tie destinies please bring them out demonic covenants holding people down listen whether you come from the north I'm still praying whether you come from the south can I tell you every territory has covenants regardless the territory I'm prophesying to you right now every territory that is connected to the soil of where you come from the apparacos that has tied down your life in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood of the eternal covenant let that covenant be broken now be broken now be broken now hear me I have taught you here how do you know the presence of a covenant the presence of a covenant is tested by the existence of patterns the existence of patterns it is happening to your brother it is happening to your sister it is happening to your father the moment you see a repetition of patterns I'm praying for someone again everything you have seen maybe with your father your mother it is now happening to you lack of progress lack of jobs barrenness unfruitfulness I declare let it break now 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 every covenant that is not of God I like you to shout this after me say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant every covenant tying my life tying my family by the blood it is broken now open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Christ oh it is broken thus far have you come no further shall you go in the name of Jesus broken by the blood of the eternal covenant every negative covenant covenants of disfavor covenants of unfruitfulness covenants of retrogression it is broken someone pray open your mouth and pray in one minute spirits of ancestry demonic manifestations in dreams
in Jesus name in Jesus name now hear me I want to take the time to pray for the sick but can I tell you this I said it I don't know if it was last year or this year that I saw an onslaught of sickness that God wants to restore the healing anointing again and I'm going to do an impartation of that in the course of the service but listen whether you are sick or not you are going to pray and in this prayer you are going to announce to the realm of the spirit that this body is touched not listen I was having a discussion with our medical people whilst visiting them I think it was a uh, day before yesterday and we we're just having discussions and you cannot imagine how many healthy people someone for instance can be AA and all of a sudden maybe preparing for marriage they can go for test and you will see another report and wonder where it came from can I tell you if you keep quiet over your body the devil will cut short your life someone shout it say in the name of Jesus I declare that this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost I declare that this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost every planting of sickness and infirmity leave now open your mouth and pray every planting of infirmity every sickness go ahead and pray that devil must leave your body now Pray that cancer out. Pray that HIV out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray that arthritis out. Pray that blood disease out in the name of Jesus. Oh, I will not die. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. That blood infection, you leave this body. Migraines, you leave this body. Hepatitis. You leave this body. Someone is praying. Rheumatoid arthritis, tumors, growths. We cost you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Do you know, no matter how, no matter how medically conscious you are, there are many people who carry all kinds of sicknesses and diseases and do not even know. And then some of them are not a medical situation. So you go and use your machines to do all your diagnosis and it shows that you are perfectly fine. Yet the patient is telling you, I know that there is something wrong. We are going to pray one more time before I begin to pray for the sick. I don't know about you, but the fullness of my days I will spend and no devil of darkness. I don't care whether they say it's hereditary. It came from your father, your mother. Open your mouth and cast it out of your life. Ladies, pray. Gentlemen, pray. No cancer. No prostrate. Open your mouth and pray. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It will not come not by age. not because you are giving birth no reject it in the name of jesus health is my portion in the name of jesus health is my portion the fullness of my days i fulfill Hallelujah. 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 I still want to pray. Now I want you to bring this set of people out to join these ones. I'm going to pray. The Lord is showing me something. I just saw written bad luck. You know what bad luck is? We call it bad luck. But in the kingdom, it is disfavor. But I saw the name bad luck. There are many people, it works for others until it gets to your turn. And mysteriously, 
I want to rebuke that spirit. Believe me, there is a spirit behind the circles of disfavor. It looks like things don't just work in your life. And I saw the power of God coming on many people. I decree and declare right now, if there is anybody, some of you are standing in for the sake of your families. Any family here that is wept in this orchestration of disfavor, we call it bad luck. At the count of three, let that fire rest upon you and let deliverance come upon you. One, two, three, be delivered now. I curse that spirit. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. That wicked spirit, let it leave you now. And even your families, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You see, as we sojourn in life, as we sojourn in life, I have taught you and I will teach you again and again the forces that are at work in your life negatively or positively that is what controls the outcomes that are in your life if you carry for instance the force of favor imagine the kinds of physical things that will happen to you and then if you carry this kind of wicked forces of disfavor imagine what happens to you it is not the physical occurrences they are only responding to something in the realm of the spirit that is upon you or around you negatively or positively hallelujah negatively or positively I'm saying it again bad luck that spirit that has followed anyone here and is following anyone online there are even people abroad you may think it's supposed to be an edge and an advantage but these same forces have followed them and rubbish their life and their dignity of living in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be set free now be set free now be set free now Hallelujah. Be set free now. The Lord is showing me a family. What I see in my vision, I'm seeing five of you. Nobody has a job. You are graduates. No job. Who is that person? I want to pray for you. Please make sure you hear the prophetic word. Don't just jump out. Listen attentively. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Who is that? Come. Graduates, five, no job. Huh? Five boys, no work, sir. Five boys, boys yes, sir. graduates, graduates sir. No, job. no job. Where are you from? I'm from Quara State, sir. Quara State. Yes, sir. You believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. Listen. There's power in the name of Jesus, oh. Don't get used to pain. Believe me, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, you came with your certificate? Yes, sir. Yeah. Look at this here, sir. I, I'm, this, I'm not getting you. This is my NYC certificate, sir. Oh, this is your NYC certificate. Don't, don't worry, my brother. God has located you. Now, you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, five people, graduates, and then no job because of how demonic the devil can be sitting on the destinies of people you think it is a coincidence let me use them as a point of contact to pray for someone here every spirit that has vowed that shame must remain with you in the name that is above all names as i'm praying for them i'm praying for you let that closed door be open now be open now be open now. Help them. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. I declare by prophecy here. Supernatural jobs for you. Now, you imagine. Watch this now. Imagine for instance, this our dear brother. Five boys. You imagine that you are the father or the mother now you've given birth to children let's assume you did not make the most with your own life you are hoping and trusting that in your lifetime that these children will become sons of consolation like the bible will call them five of them no job 
You may be saying, Apostle, we are two. Even if you are the only one, I declare in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, hear me by prophecy, wherever your job is, in this nation or around the world, may my God locate you. May my God locate you. Mama, may my God locate your children. And for all of you who have come out for this word, I stretch my hands and I declare, the same way you have come out, that is how you will come and stand here to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone, you have a brother who passes out. I don't know what they call it medically. Like the person is it's like fainting, but the person just passes out like that. Who is that person? I want to pray for you very quickly. Come. Where is he? Huh? He's in Jabi. I wanted him to come today, but he didn't come. He couldn't come. No I problem. You stand for him. He passes out. Yes, sir. How how frequent? So recently it happened five times in one day. I'm seeing a lady coming too. And then he bleeds from his mouth. And then he bleeds from his mouth. How about you, my dear? Discipler, he passes out. Your discipler? Yeah. I want to pray for you. When God reveals, it is because his power has gone ahead to bring an end to that tragedy. Remember, there was once a gentleman in the Bible who had suffered epilepsy the bible says he will fall in the midst of fire do you know what that means imagine if this person wants to cross the road and that demonic thing happens you can lie down there at the junction you see the key to opening your heart in a meeting like this is to have a heart of sympathy and compassion don't wait you have to put yourself in the shoes of others to feel what happens when god gives a prophetic word even if it is not a word for you you know in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over you, your disciple and your brother, using you both as points of contact for as many who are releasing their faith. I don't know what demonic walking is this that makes you or your loved ones to pass out, but by the blood of the eternal covenant, that tragedy, that occurrence comes to a permanent end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, comes to a permanent end now comes to a permanent end now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone um, the Lord is asking me to pray for you you are a policeman but this is tragedy over your family it's like nothing is happening I, I, I this is this is this is what the Holy Spirit is revealing to me you didn't wear your uniform to work but you are a policeman I don't know who that person is. If there is such a person, you are a policeman. Where are you from, sir? I am I serve in Abuja here, but I'm from Benue State. I want to pray for you. You believe in Jesus? I do. I believe in Jesus. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Sir, the power of God is coming on you, this man, this officer. I'm seeing a spirit behind you. I know you are a policeman, but let me pray for you now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. This thing is not even just the spirit of tragedy. It's even the spirit of death. I decree and declare, sir, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be free from it right now. I'm seeing it again. The spirit of death. This man is a police officer. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. You are a police officer too? From where, sir? Kaduna State, sir. I want to pray for you. Will you be embarrassed if I talk to you? No, sir. There is a spirit from where you come from. Huh? 
and I know this and I agree because respectfully speaking this is not just a regional thing this is not just from where you come from there are many other states that have that tragedy the person who rises up ends up dying is that true this is true yes, I need to pray for you because like this man I'm seeing the spirit of death I'm not a prophet of doom yes, that's why I said will you be embarrassed if I talk to you and this thing I'm seeing is like an armed robbery operation and then something happened and then like being shot or something I want to pray for you there is nothing you cannot do. If you have said it, then you will do it. Ha. My friend, how long have you been in the police force? It's two years, sir. Will you believe another thing if I tell you? Yes, sir. You are not going to be in the police force for too long. I'm seeing that God is, you are going to be a great entrepreneur. And God is, this is what I'm, please listen. Every prophecy I give you is subject to your partnership with God. But this is what I'm telling you, go and write it. You are going to do something that has not been done in your family. I'm telling you this. Because... Now, there's, there's no profession, there's nothing wrong with any profession, but in your heart, this is not really what you want to do. Huh? Sir. And this is even affecting your productivity because you are just there and something is telling you, do not feel bad. You were there for a reason. There are many times that God passes us through things. If Joseph did not get into the well and Potiphar's house, he would not appreciate sitting at the throne. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Let the grace that lifts men. Let the grace that helps men rise, may that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, you will not die. You will not be a victim of tragedy by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I'm hearing a name, Rosaline. 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 I believe that's a female name. Rosaline. Is there someone... With that name, I just want to pray for you very quickly. If there's someone, Rosaline, who is that? Please, if you are if you are the one, don't waste our time so that we'll pray quickly. Rosaline. That's your name? The name your parents gave you? Yes, sir. You're Rosaline too? I want to pray for you. Now, don't come out. I want to pray, but something surprising will happen now. There is a lady here. The spirit that follows you, only married men look for you. A responsible man who loves Jesus and is born again, it looks like there's something that always... I'm not saying you should come out. You are not. These are not part of... Rosaline is what I'm calling now. This one I'm praying. But the power of God, wherever you are, this, I'm seeing this, this lady, you have cried to God. You are a nice lady. And you have said, Lord, take away this reproach from my life. I'm praying right now. The anointing of the Spirit, wherever you are, that anointing is locating you. The Spirit that brings only married men who have no business coming to talk to you and they seem to come and bother you and disturb you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please help them. I declare right now that curse that is upon you, let it be broken. Let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. Let it be broken now. Rosaline, let me pray for you. There's one of you, the Lord is taking away this thing about death again. One of you standing here, the power of God is coming on you. This is the manifestation of the spirit of death. Lord, in the name of Jesus, anyone here who has been trapped by this demonic manifestation, release them now. Release them now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare upon you, you will not die. And everything that has kept your family bound, I'm prophesying to you, Rosaline, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, go and excel. I release you to go and excel. In the name of Jesus. We have to be very fast. There is, I'm seeing a gentleman here. This is a pattern that has happened. You never do well academically once. I'm seeing you have written Wayek. I'm seeing the number six. 
this is six times and you have still not made your papers i don't know who that person is is there someone like that or maybe your brother or so please let's hurry up i'm, I'm only speaking because god himself is revealing this case to me and i have to obey and honor god else i would have just spoken over the person and then we continue Wayek, i'm seen six times you've written or is it someone related to you and you've not been able to make your paper at all this is a pattern it looks like your your siblings or people in your family they don't seem to be able to excel in one sitting whether the person is inside or outside um if if for distance you cannot make it let me just know so i just speak a word and then we continue because i want to pray over the sick in the name of jesus wherever that person is i stand by the god of heaven and i declare the next exam you write by the power of prophecy we push you to the other side of victory help them in the name of jesus i curse that spirit right now out of him in the name of jesus out of him right now from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same hold on hold on you are a businessman you are into construction materials who is that i need to pray for you i'm seeing a demonic spirit just hijacking your finances and the lord is saying to release that person building construction of that sort please make sure you don't don't tell lies come out this is the house of god jesus christ is here who is that person i want to pray for you thank you for coming out i want to pray for you listen the lord calls like this because you cannot be empowered by the strength of the flesh one prophetic word you see can open a door of opportunities i know what prophecy can do remember i told you the forces that make the promises of god at work in our lives this world is too wicked to just depend on sentiments you can't sit down depending on the day i'm hoping that somebody who becomes a governor or a chairman house committee on something if he's my person he will help me that's a risk a, a very bad risk but let me pray for you i don't mean to embarrass you i'm only obeying god i will not call your name and i will not point you but there's one of you here i i pray that the mercy of god will speak over you um you have cheated people you have cheated people a lot you have done a lot of things you should not do and i need to pray the mercy of god for you you see if you want to do business we are believers do business with the integrity the the dignity of kingdom integrity this is what i'm seeing don't come and cheat and defraud people and do a lot of things cut corner a bag of cement is 10 naira you say is one thousand and then you want the blessing of god god is not a herbalist the bible says that you lay iniquity far from you is that true and then you shall be built up you will lay gold as dust even the dust of offer now i'm not condemning you the lord just ministered to me but i want to pray for you i truly believe in supernatural empowerment empowerment by the spirit some of you for many years jobs have not come for you you have done all you need to do it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but the bible says he gives his beloved sleep i stretch my hands over you god who has located you by the mercy of god i declare three months from now beginning from now march ending i prophesy to you by the power that raised christ from the dead between now and the next three months may god surprise you between now and the next three months i declare strange doors for you in the name of jesus christ supernatural doors by the spirit in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen i want to pray for you there is somebody who traveled you're a visitor you came here from cameroon please go back to your seat where are you cameroon the lord is speaking to me i want to pray for you cameroon you came from cameroon i'm not saying you are in nigeria and you live in cameroon you came you came particularly for this you are from cameroon 
my friend, you are from Cameroon. You came for this program. Bermanda. Bermanda or Bermanda. Who is from there? I'll pray for you. All of you are from Bermanda. How do I look at all of you and know that you are from the same place? What is the probability of getting it right? That all of you are from Bermanda. In the name of, I've never even been there. I've just been to um, Douala and uh, Yaoundé. That's, that's all. But in the name of Jesus Christ, for one of you, you see dead people when you sleep. Dead people, they keep manifesting. Where's that person? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you because the living and the dead have nothing in common. I want to, I'm using them. Look, as I'm praying for them, I want you to release your faith because some of you, what is happening to them is happening to you. Any dead body that will not let you rest, coming to disturb you, listen, even if it's your relative, the living and the dead are, are separated. There is the spirits of just men made perfect. That is not what is happening to you. This one is a demonic oppression. As I pray for these ones, every covenant anyone has with the dead, in the name of Jesus, let it be broken now. Broken now. Let it be broken now. In the name of Jesus. My dear people from Cameroon, I stretch my hands to you. In the name that is above all names, you came here by the Spirit. Every issue of concern that brought you here to travel all the way, return back with your testimonies supernaturally return back with your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ can we pray for the sick now please I want you to lay your hands if you came here with a sick person by the way let me use this opportunity to just make a quick announcement now we thank God for what God is doing in and through us as a ministry but just for the sake of proper coordination if you come with anyone, whether for the miracle service or any service that has um, issues, maybe like mental health or any kind of psychosomatic condition, please do well to let our medical people know alongside our security operatives so that we will guide and manage them. You'll notice a few occurrences have happened in the last few weeks. And some of these people are sincere people, either being delivered or people who already have traces of um, mental health like the lady last week or so so these are sincere people and we owe it to help them and but please do well so that whilst we are trusting God for their healing we don't want a situation where they harm or hurt other people there are children here there are adults here there are other people who are sick managing their health there are people here who are very fragile health wise and it will be wise to know that if you have someone who has come with any kind of particular aggression, do well to let the medical team know and let the security operatives know so that we'll keep them in a place where we have watchful eyes over them so that we stop some of these things because um, some of the security people that work here work professionally. So once they apprehend people, we have to submit to their way of professionally dealing with the matter. So we do not want a situation where anyone comes to church and now you have to go to the police station or respond to any security concern is that fine let's lay our hands where we are trusting god for healing holy holy glory to the lamb glory expect a miracle right now 
whether is a malignant growth that is already expressing itself as cancer I want you to release your faith and this is where we pray for those who are connecting from hospitals I remain humbled that many hospitals connect our services so that their patients whether by way of phone or whatever means you are following from any hospital right now or any family or watching across the globe and you are sick in your body here's your chance to experience the healing power of Jesus I see some of you lifting the photos or maybe connecting your loved ones go ahead and release your faith lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle you can stand in for someone if it's a part of your body you cannot touch you can just make contact with your chest I want to pray for you I want to rebuke blood diseases I want to rebuke just just I want you to be sensitive the power of God is moving to heal I want to rebuke eye conditions I want to rebuke spine conditions and all kinds of cellular deformities that are destroying people right now blood conditions your hair falling bone problems already formations of arthritis half of you is beginning to get weak and heavy you are losing sensations across several parts of your body this is what the Lord is showing me losing sensations I'm seeing others who are having severe growths across several parts of your body growths that are becoming embarrassing across several parts of your body and you're trusting God for a miracle I'm seeing a woman hold a child I think that the child does not walk this is what I'm seeing in my vision I don't know if you're watching by way of internet or maybe you're somewhere you are holding a child I'm seeing a child that I don't know whether it's, it's an epileptic child or something like that but in the name of Jesus Christ lay your hands right now and I want to rebuke that sickness healing is the children's bread in Zion there is healing now here's what will happen as I begin to rebuke that spirit remember what I taught you I want you to begin to do what you could not do if you could not walk as I begin to rebuke this sickness I want you to begin to take steps of faith and see if it's possible for you to lift your limbs and to walk you could not see as I pray for you you begin to check your eyes you could not hear as I pray for you you have some kind of heaviness you couldn't move any part of your body make sure that while I pray you check yourself and the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you begin to rejoice and celebrate with the Lord and then if I do give an opportunity we'll have very few people so that we don't prolong our stay unnecessarily we'll have a few people come so that we can have one or two people testify but let me pray now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I stretch my hands right now father thousands of people gathered here on this ground and thousands others following from across the globe there are many right now who if you do not heal them they are going to die there are many people right now who are already at stage four maybe cancer there are many right now who are victims of blood diseases and all kinds of infirmities but the Bible tells us that by your stripes we have been healed therefore in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands every spirit of infirmity that is back of any disease any sickness I command you leave God's people now I command you leave God's people now I command you leave God's people now I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus there is someone God is healing you cough out blood you cough out and you find out that you are spitting blood in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you every blood condition here represented be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name HIV be healed in Jesus name hepatitis be healed in Jesus name leukemia be healed in Jesus name 
I decree and declare anyone who has any spine problem, I command the power of God touches you right now in Jesus' name. Bone conditions, you could not work or you could not work well because of a problem with your bones, the life and the power of Jesus touches you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone severe pain you have very very severe pain at the back of your neck very severe pain the power of God is touching you right now bringing you supernatural perfection in the name of Jesus every eye condition here be healed in Jesus name anybody who could not walk in the name of Jesus I declare that strength comes to your limbs to begin to walk now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus any part of your body you could not move I declare begin to move it now liberty of expression comes for you begin to move it now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there is someone you had a dream and it's like they poured something on your head from that time you are not particularly sick but there is movement physical movement you keep feeling physical movement like an object is moving around your head I decree and declare right now let that demonic occurrence come to an end and for everyone you are standing for I'm seeing several of you lifting your phones lifting photos in the name of Jesus right here I'm praying that the power of God will touch those people wherever they are for those who are connecting from any hospital in the name of Jesus I speak to those people supernatural healing and recovery happens for you now healing and recovery happens for you now there's someone you came here feeling you literally could feel like a big mast around your stomach area the moment I'm done praying I want you to check yourself you will find out that that demonic thing is gone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ there's someone the Lord is showing me if I don't pray for you you're going to lose a lot of your teeth you have a situation I don't know what is called maybe a cavity problem that is is making maybe some kind of bacterial or fungal problem that is making your teeth to be weak and almost to, to, to rot or something like that is is produced intense order from you and you've gone to the hospital from what I'm seeing in the name of Jesus Christ may the power of God touch you right now may the power of God touch you right now the Lord is asking me to pray for a little boy he's not a baby but he's a little boy the boy acts like someone who is autistic hyperactivity I mean he can be very hyperactive like the strength of many people I declare calmness comes for that boy right now in the name of Jesus Christ any lump and any growth in any part of your body in the name of Jesus I command those growths to disappear and hear me I don't know but I'm hearing colon cancer colon cancer in the name of Jesus if there is anybody whether here or connecting across the world whether you are aware of it or not in the name of Jesus we cause those cells they die from your body they die from your body I'm seeing someone you are unable to move your fingers you're unable to move your fingers without pain but in the name of Jesus after this prayer you'll be able to move your fingers with no pain now whether I mention your case or not I'm seeing someone's a grandmother the spirit of death wants to take that woman I'm seeing sickness a grandmother with what I'm seeing if we don't pray that person may not survive up to a month a grandmother father by your mercy wherever that woman is I declare life and healing for her right now life and healing for her right now life and healing for her right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to pray I'm praying for the sick you don't have to come out I want to speak um, this is a woman you get pregnant but you are never able to pass three months 
and it looks like you have to lose that pregnancy no matter what happens you have to lose that pregnancy in the name of Jesus I am praying I don't know where that woman is maybe your sister your wife your auntie anyone connecting in the name that is above all names that plague of losing pregnancy comes to an end may the next pregnancy be the one that will lead to your children in the mighty name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be healed be healed and I did not speak about people with madness, any kind of madness. You see this mental health demonic thing again. I command let your sanity be restored now. In the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Now hear me. We're going to do two things very quickly. I want you to check yourself. Let's have even if it's just two, three testimonies to glorify Jesus. Check yourself. The moment you find out that a miracle has happened, whilst you were under the anointing, whilst I prayed, I want you to do what you could not do. You find out that a miracle has happened very quickly. I want you to come forward very quickly. There is a gentleman. Check yourself. You will find out that the mast, you came with a very strong mast around your stomach. It's gone right now. Please, if you need to go to the medical stand, why don't you go to the medical stand and check? But check yourself, you'll find out it's gone completely. And let's have a few people, God has healed people, don't sit back, make your way to the front so that we'll have one or two testimonies. Let's celebrate them. Those who are coming from outside, please make sure you allow them come. You are coming out to testify. Make your way to the front right now. Check yourself. Let's have one or two testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord. People are coming. Are you celebrating miracles? Now, while that is happening, I hope you've written your prayer request. How many of you have your prayer request? Wave it and let me see. If you are yet, if you are yet to write your prayer request, let's celebrate those who are coming. The Lord is touching several people. Ushers, please quickly. Complete your prayer request right now and pass it to the last person by your left or right and the ushers will be there to pick it We have to speak over your requests in the name of Jesus Christ Whilst you are sitting there, I'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit pray in the spirit No idle moment pray in the spirit and for those who are connecting by way of the internet You have been touched by God you have been healed I'd like you to forward your testimonies in the name of Jesus and our media people will have it. Our PR lines are open. Jesus is touching people right now. We'll take a few. Um, all the requests, once we have them, please let's bring them forward very quickly so that we can celebrate what the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. You are ready, sir? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Please listen for these testimonies. So, Apostle, she came in here. Um, she had a surgery and I can still see this car. You had a surgery? Yes, three weeks back. Three weeks back? Yes. What happened to you? I had an accident then. So one of the legs and uh, two was out. One of the legs? My toe. One Your of, toe? Yes. Oh. So all of a sudden, the neck started swelling up. Yes. So I had a surgery. Yes. Like, I think, three weeks back. Okay. So I came. I cannot move the leg. Oh, you could not move your neck? Yes. Move it now. Me. Koinonia, look at this. Let's celebrate Jesus. She had a surgery and could not move her neck. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shout a loud amen. amen. Go ahead. Let's listen to our father. I have been having neck, you know, pains behind my neck. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes the thing will come down. Sometimes it will come up. Yes. As soon as the apostle mentioned neck pain, sharp neck pain, the thing disappeared. Completely. Time. Check yourself, sir. Look at this. Completely, Completely gone. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it will never return to you again, Daddy, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's celebrate our Father. Yes, yes please, very quickly. I, I have been having severe neck pain. Neck pain also. Severe neck pain. As you mentioned my case, and also hepatitis B. Hepatitis B. Yes, as you mentioned my case, the severe neck pain just left it. Completely. And I believe God's hepatitis In the name of Jesus, the same God who did it for your neck, we declare that it happens over hepatitis. It leaves your body right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Very quickly, let's listen to our Father. I am not a member of this church. So I came. 
Daddy, go ahead. I visited my daughter here. Yes, sir. And she looked at me and I told her that I have a neck pain here and that I have done, I have gone for uh, x-ray. Yes, sir. And they told me I have cervical spondinosis. And so she laid hands upon me and prayed. After she has prayed, I began to feel much better. Yes. And now that I came here, a person I said, take neck pain. The healing is permanent. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? In the name of Jesus, Daddy, we decree and declare it will not return to you again. And may God bless that your wonderful daughter. That's how children should be. They should not cause pain and trouble for parents. In the name of Jesus, sir, we bless you and we bless your home. You go and return with testimonies in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Good evening, Cornelia. As one of my cousin's sister, she took in for three months. So as I came to this program, then she now called me early in the morning that until I wake up, I started to see blood. I said, that devil will not took away that pregnant. As I came to this program, I believed the God of my father, which is called Apostle Jesus Salima. When the prayer was going, she now called me that until I don't see blood again. Oh, she I called said, you. Yes, sir, the blood dried up. The blood dried up. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, we declare she will give birth full time. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you who are stood in for her, may God bless you. Reproach is far from your life forever. In the name of Jesus. Yes, let me take a few Apostle, years. you gave a word of knowledge of someone who had a dream that something was poured on her head. Yes. She said she had the dreams four days ago. And then since then, she has been having severe headache. She came here with the headache, but as you gave that word of prophecy, the headache is It's gone forever. In the name of Jesus, it will not return to you again, my dear. Yes, please. He had an accident last year, December, and broke his right, I mean, thumb. Yes. And then this year again, while he was working, the second thumb got broken too. So he couldn't move then. But as you were praying, the power of God came upon him. And Check yourself now. now. Are you celebrating what God is doing? Look at this. He had an accident. It will never return to you again in the name of Jesus. Yes, please, very quickly. These are long cases of uh, neck pain, back pain. You now, hold on. I have taught you here that once you begin to see certain repetitive occurrences, it is not just a miracle. There is a sign. There's something God is saying. You see, your neck is what connects the head and the body. Are we together now? And it is the neck that grants access to mobility. You see that? Once, once your neck is having a problem, you are stagnated, you are unable to move. You see that? So once you see these things happening, it's not just neck problems. These are no coincidences. They are a message that the Holy Spirit is speaking. That whatever is limiting you from it, your movement, that you cannot move to the left and the right, that limitation is broken from your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. So these are long cases of and back and neck pain. In the name the of Jesus, season. every back, every neck pain, I declare even as you have come out, you will return back with your testimonies perfected. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. For 12 years, you couldn't stand straight. You but couldn't now. stand straight? Yes, sir. For how long? For 12 years. How were you before now? Slightly bent like this. And now? During the prayers, I just started adjusting. Bend, bend, look at this. Bend to the back and see. 12 years. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? 12 years. In the name of Jesus, everything that has not been straight in your life, the Lord is straightening it right now. Shout a loud amen. amen. The Lord perfects you, my friend, in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Pastor Jakes. For Inonia, I'm here once again for a testimony. Straight to the point. Throughout last week, the, my best sitting place was the floor in the office because of back pain. So when I came here, I was praying to God, God, don't allow me to go back with this back pain. To the glory of God, after the prayers, I checked myself. Do what you couldn't do before. What couldn't you do? You couldn't bend. Look at this. Bend. Koinonia, I celebrate. Bend, but I find it okay, you couldn't bend properly. Yes. Now check yourself. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's have two or three and then so, we're done. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is a breast, breast lump. She had a lump, sir. Breast lump? She had a lump, yes. Oh, my pain, God. Severe pain. Yes. So that For how long, ma? It's like, uh, let's say, three weeks or a month. Okay. So, but when this thing came, very severe uh, pain. 
I remember I used to put uh, your uh, yes. uh, message every Ye midnight. Yes. I said the, the devil that came made a mistake because that message I put in the midnight used to drive even tenant, wicked one, out of my house. I said, what of this particular one now that I know that uh, apostle message can even heal me? That's what I have in my mind. I went to hospital, I came back. But after Mama, what happened now? Yeah, three, three or four days. Yes. As I, I was putting that your message in, in, in midnight. Yes, ma'am. I started touching the, the whole place. I couldn't feel it. It's gone. The, the pain that is, I'm still feeling small pain during the prayer now. Yes. Here, I lay hand, nothing like pain. Completely. The Lord will perfect your body and bring good tenants to your house Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's celebrate, Mama. So, Next well, person. Well, Apostle, for this ones, I've chosen not to punish myself. Yes, sir. So I invite doctor to come and... <laughs> doctor, please talk to us. Good evening, Daddy. Yes, sir. Okay, so for the two of them, basically they have um, kidney issues. Kidney? Um, yes. Wow. So for her, she said she had a medical condition. She couldn't really um, tell what exactly the medical condition was, but it involved her kidneys, and then she has been having pain by the side of her stomach for, okay. for over three years now, since um, 2021. Yes. Okay, but today, when you prayed, during the prayers and everything, she felt that pain. Gone that pain completely. is gone completely. Yes, Daddy. And then for him too, similar kind, um, he had a kidney infection. Um, we call it pyelonephritis. He had been treating over and over again, but still he didn't get his relief. He has been having pain for quite a while, but after today, after the prayers, the pain has gone. Wow. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit, all of you with kidney problems, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare perfection right now. You will never have a repetition of that situation in Jesus name yes please so we have few testimonies online okay let's just have two or three very quickly daddy this is Miriam writing all the way from UK she says I'm the one who apostle said that has moving things around my head after prayer I have had this movement for three years now I can feel I cannot feel anything moving in my head Completely. Praise God. let's celebrate Jesus for her this is from Alfred I am testifying from Dubai, he says. Last two years in a dream, someone poured water on my head, and this caused me movements in my head. As apostle gave the word of knowledge, I feel something breaking from my head. I am now free Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is an anonymous person connecting from Canada. The person says, I just received my healing. I was nursing back pain for months now. I could not bend well without pain. The pain has disappeared as Apostle prayed against back pain and spine conditions. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, um, for sake of time, okay, maybe we'll have that last one. Apostle, I, I, I had um, a pain on my head. Sometimes it will be as if a nail is being placed on my head. Yes. I came here with the pain. Immediately made mention of it. It took it's off. It's gone completely. It will never return to you. For everyone who has been healed, we declare to Jesus be all the glory. And we declare that your healings remain permanent. Now re remember that for any and every service at all, you are able to register your testimony even during the week. Our PR lines function ev every time all day. And then you can reach through our media lines register your testimony we'll be glad to take some of the testimonies on sunday hallelujah please rise i know you have tried but stretch your hands as we pray over these requests remember your request is here represented if there are still others please bring them very quickly begin to make declarations of faith that in the name of jesus christ the egyptians i see today i see them no more forever someone is praying I see them no more forever. Stagnation gone forever. Retrogression gone forever. Someone is praying. Joblessness gone forever. Rising, falling gone forever. Repetitive patterns gone forever. Are you stretching your hands to pray? In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we declare that these requests make sure you pray remember we said prayer is a force that can help you make manifest the promises of god make sure you are making declarations of faith 
as I lay my hands upon your request, the anointing of the Spirit is touching every request, touching every request, regardless the region, regardless the problem, I'm releasing the anointing upon this request and prophesying to you that you will receive testimonies. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. We are declaring even by the Spirit. Prosperity for families, healings for sick bodies, supernatural jobs, supernatural fruitfulness, marriages, doors of marriages and fruitfulness opened in the name of Jesus, financial opportunities, restorations of health, accelerations, personal revival, corporate revival, we declare by the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. I like you to shout Amen. amen. Father, I decree and I declare right now that every request here represented these are expressions of the faith of your people and in the name of Jesus I place an anointing on every one of these requests may they be turned this moment to your testimonies may they be turned this moment to your testimonies some of you beginning from tonight you start picking these testimonies for someone here it will be for you like the Bible said when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion honestly it will be like a dream for you I prophesy it so in the name of Jesus and any agent of darkness that says over my dead body for this request to be answered I decree and declare may the God of vengeance arise for your sake Every human agent that must come into partnership with the realm of the spirit to make for answers I declare in the name of Jesus beginning from tonight may the Lord not give them rest until they respond to you in the name of Jesus by the power of the name of Jesus by the anointing of the spirit I declare this request blessed they return to you as answers in Jesus mighty name we pray yes. give Jesus a big hand clap now let me speak finally over your life as we wrap up the service remember I told you prophecy is a force it's a force that reprograms possibilities in your life in the name of Jesus as you enter the month of April I speak over your life everything you have seen from january till now that is not what you prayed for is not what you agreed with god for it dies with march right now yeah. hallelujah i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit whatever represents shame reproach and stagnation after this miracle service you will see them no more can i declare favor upon your life in the name of jesus i call upon ebenezer the helper of men the one who can open doors granting you unusual kindness from men unusual access and unusual acceptance may that grace come upon you now hear me you are a man of God here I release grace upon you go back and do ministry at another level of impact you are a businessman here I prophesy upon your business provided what you are doing is with integrity and is towards the building of men I declare prosperity upon it in the name of Jesus I pray for every home here any demonic spirit that is orchestrating to scatter any home here and cause troubles we cause it right now in Jesus name for someone my prophetic word for you for the month of April is good news good news I say it again good news good news sounds sounds of joy 
good news in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare where you have been weary and discouraged. May the Lord console you with manifold testimonies. Everything that has fought your prayer life, let it give up on you now. Everything that has fought your word study life, let it give up on you now. Everything that has fought your passion for the house of God, let it give up on you now. Koinonia, let me pray over your finances. I bless you with increase. Go and prosper. Go and experience increase. I prophesy acceleration. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. My God will keep you from trouble. And my God will keep you from troublemakers. In the name of Jesus. I place a mark of honor upon your life. Wherever you go to from tonight, I pray that seasons of honor be scheduled towards you. You shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The spirit of excellence is at work in you. Go and excel. Go and excel. Your children are blessed. Your spouse blessed. Your family members blessed. Your ministry blessed. The works of your hands blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. That by this time next week, when you return back on Sunday, you will return with sounds of joy and melody. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Wave your hands to Jesus as a sign of gratitude. Lord, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, I want you, just one last announcement and we're done. I want to challenge you next week. We're starting on another note, another dimension. There are certain very vital teachings that God is bringing to us and to the body of Christ again, let me encourage you that whilst you come to church, don't say there's a crowd of people everywhere. For as long as there is one person you know who needs to be saved, or one person you know who needs to be equipped with the knowledge of the word, do well to extend an invite and invest in inviting them so that they are here and come early and the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Have you been blessed tonight? After the grace, please do well to greet one another on your way out. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.